Okay. Uh, in 2015, Stanford University Press was awarded a Mellon Grant to develop a digital publishing program that would support the work of scholars seeking to move outside the traditional monograph to publish peer-reviewed, multimodal, interactive scholarly works. To be clear, these projects are not digital editions of print books. They are digital-only arguments that cannot fit within the bounds of a print book because the arguments are themselves embedded within the digital presentation. They feature 3D environments, documentary videos, interactive maps, archival images, interactive data visualizations, and multilinear navigational pathways. The grant that SUP received was part of a family of grants awarded to university presses to help them support digital scholarship. Other Mellon initiatives included University of Minnesota's Manifold platform, Michigan Publishing's Fulcrum platform, and UBC and Washington Press's Raven Space platform. But unlike these other initiatives, SUP was not setting out to develop a publishing platform, but rather a platform agnostic program that would see digital interactive scholarly works through the typical scholarly publishing workflows like peer review, editorial development, copy editing, cataloging and copyright registration, and marketing and archiving. Our first publication, Enchanting the Desert, was released in 2016, and since then we have published a total of 12 digital projects with five more in the pipeline. After two rounds of funding, the program will be closing at the end of this year. While the publications themselves will persist, thanks to our diligent archiving efforts, we are no longer acquiring new projects. In the remaining time that we have, we will finish production and archiving of the pipeline projects and generate materials that both report on what we have learned and offer models and roadmaps for other presses to start adopting full or auxiliary programs to continue the work we've started. Uh, one of the resources that we're developing is a visualization. Uh, and what you see here are three iterations so far that we have of that visualization. And I want to spend a little time today unraveling the evolution of this work in progress. So SUP Digital's, uh, SUP's digital initiative was meant to follow as much as possible the existing print publication process. The goal was to make book-length, peer-reviewed digital publications something that could be more easily integrated into existing university press workflows. So we wanted to make a visualization that showed how the processes of, digital, of publishing a digital project mapped onto the more established processes for a book, a print book. But as we began breaking down each of the stages, we found we were describing the processes as if we were presenting that information, uh, not just to publishers, but to an entirely different audience, authors. Once we realized we had two different audiences we wanted to engage with, that is publishers as well as authors, we found that we needed to convey the information in a way that would be useful to both. Publishers needed a roadmap that conveyed a workflow that was not too far from the traditional print publication process so they could imagine adopting it into their infrastructure. And authors needed transparency about what was going on behind the scenes once they handed over their project to a press and also to understand what their continued role would be once that happened. So for both audiences, it was important for us and our initiative to show where the print and digital workflows were parallel and where they diverged. Naturally, as we ban began this work, what stood out most to us were the striking differences in print and digital publication. Our first draft then illustrated what we perceived to be the key difference between the two workflows. Whereas the established print process seemed to be very linear, with clear handoffs between collaborators, the digital process seemed to be more iterative and over overlapping, involving far more players or agents who are sim simultaneously contributing to the symphony, as it were. So this is now zoomed into that top part of the print, uh, to the print side. Starting with acquisitions and editorial development, we demarcated the handoffs between author and editor, editor and peer reviewer, author and editor again, and so on. Meanwhile, the digital workflow showed the multiple agents working on various processes together, with the innermost layer being the core author team and editor at the press. This approach adds layers as more players become involved. It shows peer reviewers, developers, and press production all collaborating earlier in the process than for books. Moving on to the post, uh, the post peer review development phase, we see a similar contrast with the print side depicting the author's continued development of the work in response to the reviewer's comments. 
followed by some of the increasing press involvement as editorial assistants requesting collate images and tables, sales and marketing sets up update, and so on. Uh, meanwhile, in the digital workflow, the author is returning to their development team after receiving reviewer feedback and assessing how much it's going to cost to implement a different platform or migrate a visualization to an open source tool or restructure navigation. Um, basically, any feedback from the editors and reviewers is a potential cost point that really isn't a factor for authors on the print side. The production lead also does a test migration to ensure that the package can be supported on the press servers and to identify any issues with archivability. The author also takes this info back to their developers to determine further costs or resource manage management for technical edits. Publication continues in print with the production and design teams working on typesetting, compiling, and designing the book. The author's involvement is limited to reviewing copy edits and proofing the text in its final format. The author and developer are more greatly involved in the digital production workflow as this is when, in addition to reviewing copy edits, the author and their development team must work close, closely with the press's production team on technical edits, which can involve anything from external link management to migration of dependencies to permission-based media changes to digital accessibility and design tweaks. Uh, for print, the preservation and distribution are firmly established. Books are distributed and are inherently preserved once libraries receive copies, though, of course, digital files are also maintained um, in most cases by the press. But for digital projects, which are hosted on the press server and thus centralized rather than distributed, preservation becomes an important responsibility of the press. Um, so at SUP, we require authors to help create documentation, um, a resource that can act as a descriptive archive and includes a screencast presentation of a typical walkthrough of the project. Uh, additionally, we web archive the project, as well as deposit its full content into a digital repository with metadata to ensure long-term preservation um, and discoverability of the bits. As much as possible, this work is done before the project's release, so even on publication day, there is an archive ready to roll over to as soon as the standards and technologies render a web digital publication obsolete. So the first attempt to portray the comparison graphically emphasized the differences. In particular, the differences we felt on the digital project side of the press uh, was how challenging and unwieldy these processes seemed to be. Uh, the print process was well established and appeared to us very linear. Even the head of print production at the press assured us that everyone had distinct roles and responsibilities and handoffs are clearly defined and timely. Um, but as we dug deeper, bringing the draft to more members of the press, we learned how similarly iterative and simultaneous many of their processes were in reality. We also realized we were missing something important from our flow uh, visualization, which is time scale. So we revisited our format. First, we cleaned up our data so that it could be more easily ported into different visualization formats. We parsed out a model that would more clearly show time increments, yet still retain the representation of overlapping roles involved in each process. In this version, each curve segment represents a month, and each subdivision within the curve represents a week. Each colored line indicates a role such as author, editor, production manager, developer, designer, etc. In this version, we also added platform and server as a role. Um, and once we map this out, you could actually see that digital project production typically took six months, whereas production for a print book usually took eight months to 10 months. Um, although on the editorial side, it took longer to develop a digital project than it did to develop a book, which might not be surprising. And this is just further view of that. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, so we reached a moment of partial anxiety and partial disappointment when we saw that the winding road sort of trailed off anticlimactically at the end. When illustrated, the road seems to just trail off and it doesn't really end at publication. In fact, can you even see the moment of publication in this winding road? It is there, I promise. Um, instead, it accurately depicts the ongoing efforts by the press to simultaneously register copyright, finalize the archive, and market the publication. Not even shown here is a moment when someone must redirect the project's enter button away from the inevitably broken live website link to a high fidelity web archive or emulation of the project. And this could be five or 10 or 20 years down the road. So far it hasn't happened with any of our projects, but it will someday. Uh, so yet another iteration um, that we've just begun in the past few weeks is one that attempts to capture the amount of effort 
the complexity in terms of simultaneous activities and the number of people involved. The color now is associated first with the person roles, which you can see on the left. Again, they include the platform and the host, and again, the final is somewhat uh, underwhelming or perhaps even discomforting in its initial impact. But I think that the point is emerging that is emerging is that it has to be taken as a whole and be more deeply engaged with. So in this sense, it's perhaps become a more academic resource than we initially set out to create for publishers only. Um, and we also foresee this version as being interactive so that certain roles or processes can be foregrounded. Um, we've generated a print process version too of the uh, Viz style, which desimplifies what we initially perceived to be a very linear process marked by clear handoffs uh, between roles. So using this style of visualization reveals the print process to be just as complex as the digital workflow, which ultimately may surprise or unnerve um, some of the intended audience, both publishers and authors. So while it's still very much a work in process, uh, progress, we do hope to be able to share something that will be useful to other publishers um, who might pick up the charge to continue supporting digital publications. And we also recognize that what we are trying to capture is very complex. And while we initially hoped to provide this particular DH audience, which consists um, primarily of authors, with a useful diagram of the publishing process, we also want to acknowledge that any data visualization is itself an argument. And so in the spirit of peer-influenced editorial development, um, I'll just wrap up here and simply uh, invite you all for comments and feedback. Um, and thank you. <laughs>